you so much. Michael Essany, thank you for having me. For taking the time to come here. We are on stage yeah. at the New Zanies Club here in, uh, in Rosemont, Illinois. You're, of course, a, a veteran of the stand-up scene. You love coming to Chicago? Is this one of your, your favorite places uh, to be? Honestly, I, um, Chicago is one of the best comedy cities in the country. Um, and if it's one of the best comedy centuries, c centuries? If it's one of the best comedy cities in this country, then it's one of the best comedy cities in the world. Yeah, it's 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 an awesome place. Yeah, I, I've read in all of your travels, you're a cosmopolitan man. <laughs> yes, you play clubs I everywhere. also enjoy that drink. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with you and the girls from Sex in the City. Yeah, but um, but you've said in your act, mm -hmm. you have been known from time to time to develop crushes on female news anchors in different <laughs> different cities. Have you seen our anchors here in Chicago? Um, not really. No, oh, it's a hottie farm. Yeah, it's a tonight after you do your set, go back to the hotel. Turn on the news. Okay. Do any of them have Latina first names and Irish last names? You know, um, like a Soledad or a O'Brien. <laughs> I'm just throwing something out. Just I, I, I'll talk my dog. I'm, I'm not. I think all the newsrooms are flustering right now, trying to figure out. To, you gotta give, give me one of them. Okay. Right. I got it. So, no, that's 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 good. That's good. You're a big city guy, though. You're from Vegas. Yes, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. And now, what do people say? How do they react when you tell them you're from? Well, when, I, when I tell people I'm from Vegas, um, usually it's they the, all the questions are one word questions and a really high pitch like what, huh, what stuff like that, um, and then they ask that must have been crazy, and no, it was not crazy <laughs> because I was eight. Not a lot you can do in Las Vegas when you're eight. If you can't really do much in Vegas until you're 21, and um, a lot of your life is lived before you're 21. Something like 21 years of it is lived before you're actually 21. But it must have had an influence being in Vegas. Oh yeah, man! It's just the hot spot. all the performance. Like yeah, you grow up with it, and you grow up with like, you know, local legends. You know, you see them on TV all the time. You see them on the news all the time. You, you can't go anywhere without seeing just posters for all these different performers. Performers, you know, like magicians and singers and comedians and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it is when you walk down Vegas, you literally always see people's names and lights. Yeah. And it, it sometimes can make you want to have yours up there too. And that bug eventually bit you. Now, a lot of stand-up comics eventually go into acting mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. It was acting first with you that you were interested in. Yeah, you know, I was always interested in comedy, and that's how I got interested in acting. Okay. Because it's like, I, I used to watch um, the old original Saturday Night Live. Oh, sure. You know, and that got me interested in comedy, but also, to me, they were on TV, so that was acting. So it was all the same to me. And it wasn't until I was about in high school when I, I really developed a love affair with stand-up comedy that um, I saw the difference between them, but I wanted to just get on stage. So theater and acting and all that stuff was the way that I could do it because I didn't understand how people became stand-ups. Yeah. You know. Well, there's that moment when a light bulb goes off, too, and you're like, hey, I'm funny. I can do this. When, yeah. did, when did that light bulb hit you? Um, that light bulb hit me probably in the eighth grade. <laughs> That we used to have um, something called Read Magazine in our classes. I don't know if that was the national thing or what, but I guess maybe they just didn't think that we as eighth graders could really comprehend American classic novels. So sometimes they'd give us these pamphlets that summarize them or turn them into scenes. And so I was always asked, since I could read off the page without making any mistakes, um, to be the lead and all these different things, and I would crack jokes and I would improvise and put things in there. And everyone's like, "Oh, that's my impersonation of my eighth grade class, just laughing with their, with their hands on their spleens." And that made me get interested in in being funny and again pursuing acting, but mainly being funny. And now, of course, everybody knows you. You're a big star on the big USA <laughs> Network program, Fairly Legal. Okay, you can say that. How did you, how, how did you land that role? A uh, good old-fashioned audition, man. Um, I, you know, I mean, I was sent out, I auditioned, and I, they ended up liking it. I mean, the, the, the more, <laughs> the more, I guess you could say, is that it all goes back to how did I get an agent and how did I get auditions in the first place. But it's like doing some plays in New York and getting some attention, and then one thing led to another, and I ended up getting to audition for Fairly Legal, which we used to be called Facing Kate. And then they changed the title. Was that a last minute decision to sort of... They always wanted to change the title. Um, it wasn't a good title. Okay. You can't, there's too many shows that are something in someone's name. You know, like yeah. Crossing Jordan or Saving Grace. You couldn't have another something in someone. 
<laughs> you, know what I'm saying? I, you know, that just blew my mind. I have never, yeah. ever considered that. You know, the, the power of the Guess A. Michael. I'm you know, guess Michael. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got a new name for the show, yeah, everybody. Yeah, all right. Um, you said before, somewhere in an interview, that when you watch a film or something that you really enjoy, mm -hmm. your first thought is, who wrote that? Yes. Who created that? Yes. Is that, I guess, ultimately where you want to be the guy who is the guy who writes it or creates it? Yeah, I mean, it's the, uh, an idea man. Yeah. You know, um, just that I get to create a universe and create a story, which is um, fortunately what I get to do with stand up. You know, I get to take this audience on some hopefully comedic journey through my brain. And at the end of it, there's like, how did he think of that? You know, or, what, or whatever. That's what, I, that's what I hope, because it's like, I'm always interested in who is the person that's brain produced this Transformers thing I'm seeing before me, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. it happens to be. Well, your brain is sort of producing a lot of interesting things on a daily basis now on Twitter. Yeah. Is, is that a big comedic sounding board for you? It really is, because, you know, um, there's having to fit everything into 140 characters makes you be succinct. Yeah. And uh, try to, it, it's really perfect for joke structure, you know, yeah. it's coming up with setups and punch lines and having to do it so much, it's just, it's a really good writing exercise. And then of course, interacting with other comedians and, you know, tagging each other's jokes and retweeting or favoriting and stuff and seeing where, it's always interesting to see what it is that people like. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll write a tweet or a joke that I think is just incredible. Nobody likes it. I write something I think is ridiculous. People are like, ramen noodles, I love it, or whatever. You know, <laughs> some random. As a general comedic rule, the more you can just incorporate ramen noodles into a joke, it's, it's golden. That's it's true. golden. Yeah. Um, I want to say before we go, you have an awesome website, baronvaughn.com. You were blogging there for a while. I enjoyed your musings, and then they just sort of stopped. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're leaving me hanging. I'm sorry, that's, and that's, you know what, I got to get back on that. You do. I think I think that the whole art of blogging, half of it is people going, ah, oh, I really should start blogging again. That's what I think the whole yeah. art of blogging yeah. is. Yeah. Well, comedy is also an art, and you are a Picasso at that, my well, friend. Well, thank so, you. So I want to thank you again very much for taking the time to come out and do our show tonight. Of course, man. You were here at Zanies tonight. You're here in, uh, at the Chicago Club this weekend. Yes. And then, as always, for more information, people could check out BaronVaughn.com. Exactly. Hook up with you on Twitter from there. Boom house. You are the man. Baron Vaughn, no, thank you're the you man. very much. <laughs> thank <laughs> you very much, Baron Vaughn. Ladies and gentlemen.